Hello guys, this is Mike from mcprogramming.org. I wanted to make a video on just generically what is Java and what happens when you run a Java program. Well, Java is obviously a programming language. It was developed or appeared for the first time in 1995 and created by James Gosling at Sun Microsystems, but it is currently owned by Oracle. And there have been seven versions of Java. If you download the JDK, you're going to get something like JDK 1.7 and, you know, some more stuff. But it, the JRE starts with 7. So this 1.7 means that it's the 7th edition or 7th release and JRE just automatically starts with a 7. So I don't know what will happen when it changes to 2.0, but the 8th uh, edition is actually on its way within a couple of months, so I believe in April maybe it's coming out, so you'll have to, you don't have to, but you can download the new Java development kit and the new JER. And some features of Java are that it's object oriented, which means that you can try to simulate real world uh, objects into a computer program it's multi-paradigm, it's structured, imperative, generic, reflective, concurrent. Concurrent means that it supports the use of threads, which is a great uh, characteristic to have of any programming language because you can do multiple things at one time. Your processor can deal with a bunch of different code simultaneously, so it gets tasks done a lot quicker. The way a computer works is it only reads binary numbers, and binary numbers are zeros and ones, ones and zeros, zeros and ones, and a bunch of that. That's what your computer reads at the CPU level, but in reality, zeros and ones is almost an abstraction in itself because it's the zero and the one represents electrical currency, and when it's... Uh, getting sent, like if the currency goes up on a graph, it's a 1, if it goes down, it's a 0, so it's really just this uh, electrical pulse, you could call it, that runs your computer. But we type with words, so, you know, when you say for, you know, for loop, and you're saying in I, blah, 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 all of that is really zeros and ones covered by what's called data abstraction and that makes it a lot easier to use human readable form but let's let's talk about what happens when you compile your program which if you haven't done this yet you're going to need to know how to do this I teach Java and Eclipse so you're not really coding in the compiling uh, code that you would run on the command line but if I was to run something on the command line I would write a Java program and it would have to have a .java extension for your uh, compiler to recognize it as a Java file. And I would say Java C, which is the Java compiler. And granted, all this will only happen if you have both of these in place. So now let's just say we said hello world.java. And then you would hit enter and then what you would do is you would end up with a program called hello.class and what hello.class is is bytecode java bytecode and this is your it's binary but it isn't subject to your particular operating system necessarily what it is subject to is the java virtual machine so that it runs on a Java virtual machine which exists inside of this Java runtime environment. That's why you have to have this and that's why if you haven't programmed before but you do need to download Java all the time it's probably because there's certain Java applications that are online that won't run because it needs to run on a Java virtual machine so it mandates you to download a JRE. So that is why you have to download all those annoying Java updates constantly. But anyways, so now you have this bytecode, hello.class. And what this is, like I said, is zeros and ones again. And when you download the JRE, you have to tell the, the 
download source if you have a Windows or if you have a Linux or if you have an Apple and the reason for that is that the Java Virtual Machine will directly talk with your operating system depending on what it is because if we didn't have this virtual machine we would have to recompile this code on whatever machine we're on whether we're on a Windows or an Apple we would have to chain we would have to recompile it with a compiler that's compatible with your operating system so this makes it easy this makes it cross-platform it means that you don't have to that you can run this code on any system that just has the JRE which holds the Java virtual machine so that makes it pretty useful and once we do that if we're still on the command line what we do is we say Java hello you take off the dot class you don't want to have dot class and you run that and it will run that bytecode on the Java virtual machine which will interact with your operating system and your computer program will work so that is what happens behind the scenes at the very basic level there's a lot more to it but that's as basic as I can get um, I don't want to overwhelm anybody but I do want you to appreciate the fact that when you're you're making your programs you're not writing like this all of that's hidden by Java's uh, syntax so that that's nice you don't have to worry about that um, you don't have to worry about such as in C++ there was pointers and you had to directly deal with memory location we don't have to deal with that we just create objects and we have what's called a garbage collector and what that does is when something some object or variable that you created but you don't use anymore automatic garbage collector will retake that memory space and give it to something else so you don't have to worry about filling up your memory and dealing with when you stop using something you have to you know delete it and free up that memory space again so there are a lot of advantages to using Java but there is no such thing as one language fits all so Java works and great for a lot of things It's probably the most popular language at this time um, that's debatable a lot of people like C++ people like Python but Java serves its purpose in a lot of ways it has its weak links in a lot of ways but this is what uh, I hope you enjoy and I'm willing to teach this to anybody who is willing to learn so thank you guys for watching and please subscribe below